Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 100. And 73 and we are on page number 100 we are in the process of solving problem from the quiz that started on page number 99 the quiz that we are referring as test number three if you're interested in solving the the first two exams that appeared in the previous edition the, the fifth edition you'll find that the solutions to all the problems from practice test one is on day number 61 to 70 and practice problem test number two is from day number 71 to 80. In the event that you want to solve all the problems in this book, you will find the solutions to every single math problems from the fifth edition from day 1 to 80. Today we'll solve problem number 15 and 16. Let's take a look at it. It says which of the following statements, which of the following situations rather, which of the following situations shows a negative correlation. So we're looking for a situation which shows negative correlation. Let's look at answer choice A. Answer choice A says, as we move from winter to the spring and then to summer, as we move from spring, as we move from winter to spring, and then, and then to, and then to summer, daylight hours increase. Daylight hours increase. In the event that you have trouble reading my handwriting, it's important that you have the book in front of you so that you are reading the problem with me, it will help you understand it better. Also, I try to read as I, as I write, so that, uh, so that you can understand, even if you have trouble with, uh, even if you have trouble with my handwriting, I, I make a point of reading it as I, as I write, uh, for that, just for that purpose. So here we go. It says, as we move from winter to spring and then to summer, the daylight hours increase. So, here's your winter, here's your winter, then spring, and then summer and if you were to call this a day one and day two and day three and so on and so forth and you numbered all the day as the number of days goes up the temperature tends to go up it says as we move from winter to spring and then to summer the daylight hour increases not the temperature rather the num uh, number of uh, hours we get light uh, sunlight it increases as we move from winter to all the way to summer, and if you remember this uh, day is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and forth, up until the nth day, whatever that happens to be, as that number goes up, so does the number of hours we get of sunlight. But that's not a negative correlation. This is a positive correlation. This is a positive correlation because they are both moving in the same direction. As the, as the day go, number of day goes up, so does the number of hours of sunlight, sunlight that we get, or if you walk, start from the other end, as, the, as, as we move in the other way, as the numbers of day, these are numbered, you see, as those numbers go down, so does the number of hours of uh, sunlight that we get goes down. They move in the same direction, and when the both variables move in the same direction, when one goes up, the other one goes up as well, or when one goes down, the other one goes down as well, well that's a positive correlation, it's not a negative correlation, it is wrong. We're looking for something that shows positive correlation. Let's look at answer choice C. Answer choice C. It says more coffee I, she drinks. More coffee she drinks. Jumpier becomes. Again, you will have to have some mechanism, some system of measuring 
jumpiness, some way of measuring jumpiness and once you have that measurement in, it, it has to be expressed in a numerical value obviously because otherwise we can't talk about these things it has to be measurable but once you devise that method then what you find is that as the amount of consumption of coffee goes up as she drinks more and more cup of coffee first cup in the day second cup of the day the fifth cup the seventh cup the twentieth cup in the day as more coffee she drinks in the day she becomes jumpier and jumpier but this again is a positive correlation Because as the consumption of coffee goes up, so does her jumpiness, if there is such a word. You understand? Let's look at our situation D. D says number of people who came to Receptionist, the number of people who came to receptionist each hour. So you're running an office build, you're running an office, or perhaps uh, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, you have a desk there in the front, maybe at the front of the entrance of the building, uh, whatever it is, there is a, there is a desk there to, uh, where, where the receptionist is, and he or she keeps a log for every hour from the time that she opens her desk in the morning until the evening that she leaves and for every hour uh, 8 o'clock 9 o'clock so on and so forth noon 1 o 1 p.m 2 p.m 3 p.m all the way up to 5 p.m and she keeps a log on between 8 and 9 i had five people coming to my reception at the desk and then we had from 9 to 10 i had four people and three people and 10 people and 12 people and so on and so forth it's a log of it's a log of number of people who came to her desk who came to the receptionist each hour. There is no positive or negative correlation here at all. As a matter of fact, there is no correlation at all because in order for you to have a correlation, either positive or negative, we have to have two variables. There are we don't have two variables here. This is just a lag of keeping track of how many numbers, how many people uh, are coming are coming to her desk. It's like a, it's like if you're reading a book. If you're reading a book and you keep it, uh, keep a log, uh, you keep a track of how many pages you read every day. So whatever day one, on day one I read five pages, on day two I read twenty pages, on day three I didn't read at all, I took a day off, on day four I read seventeen pages, and so on and so forth. On the last day when I finished the book I read three pages. Well, it's just a log. It's just one variable, which is the number of pages I read in a given day. Where's the other variable? There isn't any. How can you possibly even talk about a correlation, positive or negative, when there is only one variable? Do you understand? This is not the answer. I wonder what the answer is actually. Let's take, let's take a look at answer choice B. Suspense is just too much to bear. It says, as her as her speed goes up, her mileage, which they're measuring it in miles per gallon, MPG is miles per gallon, how many miles I get for each gallon of gasoline, it says as, as her speed goes up, her mileage goes down. Oh, there you go. They are moving in the opposite direction. So apparently, apparently this lady has a gauge in her car which I do not. I do have a gauge which shows me my speed when I'm driving it tells me how fast I'm going. Everybody everybody has that. A gauge that shows how fast you're going, your speed. But in, in addition to that, in addition to that she has one more gauge. She has one more gauge which actually gives her at any given second it tells her what is her mileage per, per, per gallon. How many gallons is she burning per gallon of gasoline? And what she noticed is that as the, as the needle moves up in the speed, as faster and faster she goes, the efficiency of the car goes down. The car, the car gives fewer and fewer miles per gallon. And that is true. If you drive at a very fast speed, uh, you, will, you will find that the uh, mileage per gallon goes down drastically, especially when you begin to approach 70, 80 miles an hour. Uh, you don't get the same mileage as you do at around 40 or 50 miles an hour. Do you understand? There is a reason why they chose 55 miles an hour speed limit in, 
this is from the old days, olden days in the 70s when there was an oil embargo and it was for oil efficiency because they found out that that's the optimal speed, that's where you get the best mileage. Now I'm not suggesting that you start driving 55 miles an hour in a, on a 20 mile zone, do you understand? But as you can see, as, as, the, as the speed goes up, as her speed goes up, her mileage goes down. But there you go, they move in the opposite direction. There is a negative correlation here. The correlation here is negative. Let's do the next problem, number 16. Some of these problems are just weird, you know. The, the and some are quite straightforward. Some are quite straightforward. And by straightforward, I mean they require some calculation and that's it. Such as the one that we are about to do, number 16. In number 16, we are being asked to compute the square footage of a Norman window. And yes, there is such a thing as a Norman window. I did not know myself, so I looked it up on the internet, and there is such a thing called Norman window. When I Google it, there is also a manufacturer by the name of, by the name of Norman. But that's not what we're talking about here. There is a type of window which is called a Norman window. I don't know his, I don't know the history of it, obviously, but somebody must have come up with that idea, a guy named Norman, I guess. And it looks like this. A Norman window is where you have a rectangle like this. This is a rectangle. This is a rectangle. And then here you have a semicircle. Like the ones you see in the churches. That's called a Norman window. But come to think of it, if we see, in the, see them in the churches, then this is not something new, obviously. This has been around for hundreds of years, if not thousands. I don't know the history of it. But anyway, this is the Norman window. And we are told that it is five foot, five foot tall. This is what we are told, five foot tall, which means from here to here is five feet and is three foot wide. But it's three foot wide, and then from here to here is three feet. But in that case, finding out the area of the rectangle is quite straightforward. Deal. The area of the rectangle is just three by five. It's fifteen square feet. That was the easy part. The tricky part is how do we go about measuring the area of the top part, the semicircular region. What do we say? It? The semicircular region. This region right here. Well, we have to somehow figure out the area of this half a circle. How do you find area of a circle? Area of a circle, let me change the color. Area of a circle we know. Area of a circle we know is pi r squared. Now here a represents the area of a full circle, you understand? Pi r squared. r stands for the radius. You, we already know this thing, we already learned it long time ago. r stands for radius. What is the radius of this circle? Well we know from here to here is 3 feet. If from here to here is 3 feet, then from here to here is also 3 feet, which is the diameter. Which is the diameter from here to here, which means the radius is half the distance from here to here. <laughs> And if the whole thing is three feet, this half a dis half the distance which represents the radius must be half of three feet, one and a half feet. So here we have pi r squared. R here is 1.5. 1.5 squared represents the area of the entire circle. We do not need the area of the entire circle. We want only half the circle. So well, that's not a big deal. Just divide both sides by two. If you take area and divide, take a, take half of that. We have to take a half of this. There we go, we're done. That's that's the area of this red region. So it's we all done. The area of this entire window, area of this entire window, which is what they're looking for, the square footage of the window, is simply 3 by 5 plus 3 by 5 is this one, 3 times 5 plus this guy. Pi times pi times 1.5 squared over 2. And what's the unit? The unit. This and this, this is this. This whole thing is one quantity, obviously. What's the unit? The unit is square feet, or feet squared. 
you see, 3 feet by 5 feet, feet times feet is feet squared, and the radius is being squared, which is 1.5 feet times 1.5 feet is going to be feet squared. So that's your answer. That's our answer. See you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.